You're about to watch a video detailing the installation of a WarmCarNow.com remote starting kit in a 2011 Infiniti G25X. We're going to use a telematic smartphone controller um, and we're going to be able to activate the remote start from the OEM fob by locking the doors three times. We're in a 2011 Infiniti G25X. Putting the uh, WarmCarNow.com remote starter kit in the vehicle. We're going to install the remote starter kit. It's going to be able to be activated by the OEM remote by locking the doors three times. We're also going to add the MyCar smartphone controller to the uh, install at the end. So if you're doing just the OEM remote activated install, once we get done with that and we, we test the car with this remote, your installation is done. We're going to continue on with the installation and put the my car in for the telematic smartphone control after we're done with what's called the standalone installation. We're going to go ahead with the disassembly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the side trim here off of the dash. Releases by clips. We use a plastic tool so we don't mar up the, uh, the plastic of the vehicle. 10 millimeter, we're going to pull out the two bolts that hold the hood release on. Okay, at this point, we can go ahead and we can remove the lower portion of the dash. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just pop this, um, this piece, this bezel piece out a little bit so that we can clear the uh, dash here or we can we can just tip it uh, the tilt up we're going to put the steering wheel in the uh, full upright position so that we have clearance to get this dash to release I'm gonna unplug all of the uh, plugs from the back of the dash Uh, depending on what options the vehicle has will determine how many of these plugs you'll have to remove. Uh, that is the trunk release. This is the traction control. Um, we have a key port. We're going to use the key port when we program our device. So we're going to unplug it for now. Um, we're also going to uh, unplug this uh, apparatus that has to do with the climate control. There's a uh, rubber hose and a plug. We're going to remove both of those. We're going to release the diagnostic plug also from its holder by pressing the ears on the side in and uh, releasing this from it from the metal. Okay, we're going to remove the metal plate for 10 millimeter. Okay, this will give us access to uh, most of the things we need on the driver's side here. The only other thing we'll have to do to get the parking lights, we're going to go into the driver's kick panel. Okay, there's three plugs on our harness. There's a brake T-harness, there's a key port T-harness, and there's a diagnostic plug T-harness. Calling them T-harnesses because we're going to basically plug in the plug from the vehicle, and then this becomes the plug that we're going to mount under the dash. So we've teed into these circuits. Now we're going to connect into the key port. Um, by the way, this was the diagnostic plug plug that we plugged in first. Now we're going to locate the key port plug and we're going to plug the key port plug in. And this becomes our new key port plug when we re-plug the key port in. It's going to be one extra plug 
Um, this is for a different uh, installation. This is for vehicles without a key port. So we're not going to use these two plugs here. Now we're going to plug in the brake harness. We're going to locate the brake switch. Um, it's behind this module. I'm going to move the uh, tablet here so we get a better view. So the brake switch is going to be located up here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to unplug the brake switch. And we're going to plug our T-harness into the brake switch. Okay, we've plugged our T-harness into the brake switch. Now we're going to uh, continue on. We're going to need access to the push to start button which is located right here on the vehicle. It's hard to see, it's behind the steering wheel. Um, if you're in the vehicle, you'll know where it is. I'm going to reach up behind this button and push out to release it from its dash, from the dash here. So, so the button is sticking out a little because we've released it. Now I'm going to uh, going to remove a clip underneath that's keeping the wire from coming out. Right here we're going to release this clip and then this will allow us to get a little bit more slack on the wire. You can also reach up behind it and unplug it if you can get your hand up in there. So we're going to use our pick tool. We're going to push the ears in on the uh, the clip that holds this harness this will give us a little bit of uh, lead way when we want to uh, get at this button It'll allow us just enough to get it out where we can go ahead and, and push the release clip and unplug the push to start button. With the button unplugged, we can go ahead and we can drop the harness down underneath the dash. We're going to remove a little bit of this insulation or push it back, being careful not to damage the wires. We're going to locate our uh, push to start wire on our plug. Okay, our instruction sheet shows a picture of the plug and the uh, view is looking at the plug from the back where the wires go in. We're looking for the brown wire located at this bottom corner pin here as we're looking at the plug. There's a list of the vehicles and what color this wire should be right here. You use the chart and go across from the model and this will give you the information for each specific plug that we're dealing with. So we're looking for a brown wire. We're going to uh, orientate the plug with the clip in the up position and we're going to find the bottom corner most wire which is brown. So we've, we've isolated the brown wire by pulling it out a little bit. We're going to use what's called the posi tap to make our connection. This is a connector that doesn't require any tools or any soldering. We're going to unscrew the tap. We're going to slip the wire in this groove and then we're going to screw the tap back together and this, this needle is going to pierce the wire. So we're slipping the wire in the groove and we're going to screw this back together. It's going to pierce the wire and allow us to make our connection by unscrewing the end collar. Here I'm going to show you on another tap. We're going to unscrew this portion of the tap. We're going to slide our wire in, push it down firmly. You'll feel it bottom out. And then we're going to screw the tap shut and make our connection. So we want to locate our push to start wire. And by the way, when you buy this system from warmcarnow.com, everything comes pre-configured. Um, we eliminate what you don't need and leave what you need for the job. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to leave a generous portion of wire. Um, we, can, we can always band it up if we don't use it. So we want to cut the wire where we want it. 
I'm going to strip about a quarter of an inch off the end. We're going to go ahead and we're going to push it into the tap. You'll feel it initially touch the inside of the tap and then we'll push it in until it bottoms out. And then we're going to tighten the collar. We're going to pull on it. This is, I'm pulling on it pretty hard and it's not coming out. Um, we have a solid connection at this point. We're going to go ahead and we're going to advance to the next step. Parking lights are going to be done in the driver's kick. I'm going to remove this plastic trim so uh, I can get the kick panel off. We're also going to take this plastic nut off that's located in the back here. Okay, so I'm going to pop the trim up. I'm just going to grab it from underneath and pull up. And use our plastic tool. And we can release it. It's hard to see. I'm going to try to get you a better picture here. So we're just putting our tool underneath. And we're releasing the clips. And we pull up. pop right off. So we've just popped these clips uh, are what hold it on. We get down into some plastic uh, clip acceptors here. I'm going to pull the nut off in the back. Um, this will allow us to remove the driver's kick pin. At this point we have access to the harness that the parking light is in. So the parking light trigger is a positive parking light trigger. If we look on our instructions, we show a picture of the plug, the position um, that the wire is in, the pin position, and the color. So in our application, we're looking for the G25. Should be red at pin eight. So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna look down. Um, really, there's only one plug that's going to meet the criteria and have this red wire in the position. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to test our wires. We've located our target wire on the center plug. It is the red wire at pin 8. We're going to verify that this is the parking light by using a regular standard test light to verify this connection going to uh, probe the wire and we're going to turn on the switch while we probe it. You can also, if you have a problem sticking it through the insulation, we can go down into the terminal and uh, we can test. So the lights are off. When we turn the parking lights on, the test light will illuminate. We verified that this is the correct connection for our parking light activation. We're going to go ahead and we're going to unplug the plug. We're going to use our pick tool, push in the release clip, and remove the plug. We're going to cut the tape away so we can get on this wire. I'm going to be careful not to cut any of the conductors. we have our target wire isolated, we're going to apply another posi tap. Again, we're going to unscrew the tap, wire in the groove, screw the tap back together. We're going to loosen the collar to accept our incoming wire or our connecting wire, which is our brown wire off of our harness. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to locate the brown wire. Now the good thing about these posi taps are we can we can unhook them and we can take them off or disconnect to take the wire off and put it back on without any tools or doing any uh, any damage to the vehicle's wiring. So we're going to leave a length of wire. So if you have to you have to take it out to route something a little different, you can go ahead and you can unscrew the uh, collar, pull the wire out, route it, and then put it back in. So. I'm slipping the uh, 
wire into the collar of the posi tab making sure all the strands go in I'm pushing it down and I'm tightening up the tab so we have our brown wire connected we're gonna plug our parking light harness back in so now if you have a vehicle that does not have auto lamps you could be done with the installation right now if you have auto lamps we need to hit the gray wire that goes to the pin switch located in this harness or at the BCM because we have to go to the BCM for this installation we're gonna do it at the BCM if you go and you check out my other uh, infinity videos for the the Nissan one harness you'll see how to uh, get the um, parking light shut off or the auto lamp shut off actually in this harness rather than going to the BCM it makes it a lot easier but that's on another video uh, this is a my car installation so we need to access lock and unlock and we're going to do the auto lamp shutdown at the BCM as per the instructions okay at this point if you don't have auto lamps and you're not doing uh, any other controllers you're just activating by the OEM remote the installation would be finished we're gonna go ahead and temporarily plug in the key port so we can we can move on to programming our device um, we're gonna program it and then I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the installation for the advanced install so we plugged in the key port and we want to plug in the push button Okay, at this point, we're ready to begin programming our device. Okay, so, so our units come completely plugged in so that you know where every plug goes. At this point, you want to unplug all the plugs from the device. There's a program button located at the top. We want to hold this program button down while we plug in the four pin plug or the data plug. So we're holding it down, we're plugging in the 4-pin, the lights on the device are going to begin to cycle. We want to release on a solid yellow. If we miss it, the device will cycle back around and will release on solid yellow. If we make a mistake, we can unplug the device and redo the procedure. So we want to release on yellow. With the light on, solid yellow, we want to plug in the remaining connectors. We're going to start with the 20-pin. We're going to plug in the can plug which is white on the back and then we're going to plug in what's called the RL plug vehicle can either require RL1 or RL2 be plugged in there's a list of vehicles in which one it would require so if we're looking at the G25 we would like to uh, plug in or have to plug in RL1 you plug in RL2 and you go to activate uh, the brake lights aren't going to come on meaning the brake pedal is not being held by the device or turned on and the, the vehicle will not crank so it's important to select the correct RL when we when we test start it we always look at the brake lights and uh, they should illuminate when the device is activated this is indication that we have the correct RL selected so with the light on solid yellow we want to also have the key in the key port so I've locked the key in the key port we're going to press and release the program button on the device two times once twice lights are going to blink the yellow light we're gonna wait a couple seconds the light will go solid we're gonna press the push to start button we're gonna have the red and the blue light illuminate we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press the push to start button again the blue light's going to go out, come back on, and flash rapidly. At this point, we're going to press the push to start button again. And then we're going to press the push to start button two times. The lights will begin to cycle. They can cycle for up to two minutes. This is the device um, acquiring or uh, decrypting the key codes to the vehicle. And again, this process can last two minutes. When the light begins to flash yellow, like it is, the programming process is complete. We can press the push to start button to turn the vehicle's ignitions off. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to activate our remote starter. We're going to release the key from the key port. 
and uh, we're going to test it with the doors open. When you're using the system, both doors must be closed for it to uh, operate correctly. We're going to lock the doors three times. Each time we lock, the blue light should flash. The red light is on here. I'm looking. Um, we have no brake lights, so we have to see. Sometimes the RL wire is not totally correct here, the chart. So if we have no brake lights, then chances are we're going to have to switch the RL. So I'm going to let it cycle through. I'm going to press and hold the brake, shut everything down, and we're just going to switch RLs. I'm going to go to RL2. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to activate. Lock, lock, lock. I'm watching. I have brake lights now. And I have a successful start. The vehicle is running. So, this chart isn't always correct. And uh, as I stated, we watch the brake lights. And that's how ultimately we determine we have the correct RL. So the vehicle's running. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut it down. I can press this three times and turn it off. Or I can uh, press and hold the brake. And the vehicle will shut down because I have the doors open here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to move on to uh, the advanced installation. Okay, we're on the passenger side. Uh, we're going to do pretty much the same procedure to remove the passenger kick panel as the driver's kick panel. I'm going to go ahead and take the plastic nut off in the back. Um, we're going to have to pop the sill plate up here or the sill trim. So we're just going to loosen it a little bit with our plastic tool. Then we should be able to pull right up on it. Now to release it, then we'll use our plastic tool. We'll just pop the kick panel out and release the clips for that. Pull it down a little and come straight out. Uh, the deal, the reason we're doing this is we have to physically connect lock wires to the uh, BCM. The plug that they're in may not have the uh, have wires going to it, so we'll have to insert pins into the plug. We're going to be dealing with the green plug right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unplug it. We're going to match up the plug to our um, our data sheet. And we're going to look for the auto lamp shutdown wire or the door pin switch first. Okay, so we're looking for a gray wire at pin 39 um, in our instructions. It's going to show the plug. Hard to see. And we're looking for pin 39. So I want to orientate the plug this way. Clip up, looking at it from the back. And uh, we're going to go second, second pin in from the end. Um, as indicated by the instructions, just going to remove a little bit of this tape to allow us to uh, spread the wires. We're going to turn the plug right here is the, the first pin. I want the second pin in, which is a gray wire. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use our posi tap. We're going to unscrew our posi tap. We're going to slip our groove to our posi tap. Put the wire in it, screw the tap back together. Now we'll loosen our collar and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put our, um, our connecting wire into this posi tap. But before we do that, we still have to run our wires over. And I'm going to locate the uh, lock and unlock spots in the BCM that are going to require pins to be inserted in there if there are no wires. The device comes with pins crimped to the lock and unlock wire. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look. We want two positions. We want position number 15 and 37. So 37 is going to be lock and, and it varies with Murano. So there's a note on here. If you have a Murano and you're doing it, it it's not the same pin. Um, and we want pin 15. So pin 37 is 2 over from 39. So that will be an easy one. We, we just connected to 39. So we'll look 2, 
two empty spaces over, we're going to insert our pin here. And then on the top row, we're going to go over six pins. One, two, three. Three's occupied. Four, five, six. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert our wires in after we run them over. But we've located the uh, empty pins here at the BCM. Okay, we're back on the driver's side and I've got the three wires um, banded together that I'm running across the vehicle. They're, they're originating at the device. So the white, the green, and the pink with the black stripe. I have a special tool. It's uh, basically a long screwdriver with a hole in it. I use this to route wires uh, within vehicles or uh, through firewalls. And um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert one of our wires into our uh, slice in our in our tool. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do the auto lamp shutdown wire or the pink with black because we're going to be cutting this clip uh, this pin off because there's a wire present in the BCM. If there wasn't a wire present in the BCM, you can snap this this clip or pin into the plug. The lock and unlock have uh, pins on our wires to insert into the BCM. So we're going to go ahead and our path is going to be back here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to slip the screwdriver through um, and then we're going to go around on the other side and we're going to retrieve the screwdriver. So you see where I am above the gas pedal, push it through, we got our wires going there. Then we'll, what we'll do is we'll route our wires up this way so that we don't see them or they don't interfere with anything. I'm going to go back over the passenger side and retrieve our wires. Okay, we're on the passenger side. We've retrieved our wires. We're going to go ahead, we're going to pop this plastic nut off of here so we can pull the carpet down a little bit. And we'll just pull the carpet down and route our wires underneath the carpet. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, the first connection we're going to make is the uh, auto lamp shutdown. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to trim the pin off of this um, wire here. Get my light situated a little bit. A little bit tough filming in the kick panel. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut the end off, strip about a quarter of an inch off of our wire. I'm going to take our posi tap here. We're going to slide our wire into our posi tap, push it in, tighten the collar. Give it the pull test, and uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to inserting the pins in the plug of uh, this BCM plug. Okay, we're going to insert the pins. Um, what I have to do, there's a little clip here. I want to release this uh, lock clip a little bit in order to get the pins in. We don't want to release it too much and pull these wires out. That would be a total nightmare. So we start at the side with a flat screwdriver and we just pop the side out a little bit we get this this started actually hold it out a teeny bit with this screwdriver and uh, this will open it enough so we can go ahead put the the pin in and get it to stay in so we're gonna go over two pins to 37 with our white wire one two Okay, now we're going to pop the uh, little lock mechanism out and uh, we're going to insert our pin in until it locks. And we're, we're turning the wire so that we, we get it to lock in. So we're just being gentle with it. And when we're in the right position, it will go down and lock. There we 
go. So we've got the pin in three quarters of the way. I'm just going to pop this out a little bit and uh, insert the pin the rest of the way. Well, I guess not. Okay, so we have our first pin locking in. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to locate our second pin. And... Uh, you know by looking at it if you're looking at the pin this way I believe this face of the pin right here a little hard to see will go towards the uh, white cover that we've uh, unclipped Okay, so we're counting over six pins on the top row. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll put a little uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, a little mark by it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to orientate the pin. And I'm going to grab another pin to show you what I'm talking about with the, uh, the direction of these going in. So we're going to want this groove on the top facing the white plastic clip. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to push the pin in until it goes down about three quarters of the way down. And then it's going to lock in on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another clip to show you. Okay, it seemed like when we inserted the, uh, the pin that we had to have this side right here. Uh, you see how this goes up this neck. We had to have this side facing the, uh, the lock clip. And we just gently push down, don't force it. Um, I had to pull the lock clip out to get this pin to go all the way in just a little bit on the lock clip you don't want to pull that lock clip out this green one it seemed like we had to have this side facing away from the lock clip so uh, you can push down on them and they'll, they'll pop in when they're correct you don't have to force them if you force them they're gonna bend and they're not gonna go in okay so we have our pins inserted um, They're both locked in, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug this plug back into the BCM. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue on with our installation. We can test these wires to make sure they're lock and unlock, and we'll, we'll do that before we go back to uh, the driver's side. Okay, we're going to use a standard grounding test light. We're going to ground it to a clean metal surface like the clip here that holds this BCM in. And we're going to probe each of the wires that we've connected. We're going to probe the green. And we can hear the locks actuate. We're going to probe the white. And we can hear the locks actuate also. So we know that these are the correct wires to lock and unlock the vehicle that we've inserted into the BCM. And we are on the correct pins. 
So we're going to go ahead back over to the driver's side. We're going to add the MyCar smartphone uh, controller. Um, there's uh, this side down stamped into the case. It must be mounted with that side down uh, and not obstructed by metal when, when we go to, to mount this device. To install it, again, if you buy it from warmcarnow.com, everything comes plugged in. It's ready to, uh, ready to install. So we're going to locate our cable banded up to the neck of our T-harness, and we have a uh, four-pin plug with a clip on it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to plug the MyCar and into this clip. When we do this, the lights on the MyCar are going to come on immediately. It's going to search for a cellular and GPS signal. Um, we're going to let it sit up on the dash with the correct side facing down until it does this. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, teach the my car to the Evo all or introduce it to the Evo all. Okay, we're going to need the uh, key fob in the vehicle uh, while we program here. We're going to have to turn the ignition to the vehicle on. We're going to unplug the four pin data plug from our device. We're going to hold our program button down, plug in the four pin. We're going to release when the red and the blue light are lit. Now, I don't know if you heard, uh, when I unplugged this 4-pin, our, our, our locks did not like that, and they started uh, clicking back and forth. So this may happen when you're doing your programming as well. So we've released on blue and red. We're going to press and hold the button down again. The blue and the red light are going to go out. We're going to release the button when they come back on. At this point, we're going to push the push to start button two times. When we do this, the yellow light in the center is going to come on when the ignition to the vehicle comes on. And when the Evo has accepted the my car, the blue and the red light are going to blink. It happens fast, so pay attention. There we go. We got them blink. It's accepted the my car. We're now going to push the push to start button to shut the ignitions off. The Evo is going to exit uh, the uh, RF kit or controller programming mode and we're going to go ahead and we're going to check our device. We've acquired a cellular lock, so we're going to send a couple test commands to our device. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open our app again and we're going to press the, uh, the lock button. So when the vehicle receives a signal, um, we have an indi indication here uh, that will tell us that, that the, the vehicle is locked. Um, we'll also have an audible confirmation from our phone or our... Uh, our okay, I'm outside the vehicle and I want to give you a, uh, a demo from outside. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, reopen our app. Okay, now remember to plug in the key port before we do uh, remote starting here or it's, it's not going to start. So we're outside the vehicle, we've got our app open, we're going to send a lock command. Now watch the parking lights on the vehicle. Doors to the vehicle just locked. We're going to send an unlock command. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the vehicle. Vehicle has received a signal as the parking lights and the, the chime of the smartphone have indicated. Vehicle started and running. Uh, we're going to get a uh, runtime indication uh, 14 minutes 50 some seconds now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shut the vehicle uh, off the vehicle is now off we're going to locate the vehicle with our GPS feature of our device um, we're showing uh, exactly where the vehicle is now we're gonna go ahead and go back and uh, we also have some auxiliaries we can configure. Um, we're going to go into the auxiliary menu. We're going to 
set this as a trunk release confirm it um, So we're going to go ahead, set it for trunk release, confirm, and then uh, we're going to click OK. There are also four auxiliaries that can be configured. Um, your, your device must support four. This, this one's only going to do, uh, say, the trunk release. To configure the auxiliaries, you click the arrow up, click settings tap auxiliary one uh, go to trunk release hit confirm and uh, this will set that auxiliary to pop the vehicle's trunk or hatch if applicable now keep in mind we retain the ability to do three press remote starting notice how the brake lights are on So we also can activate from our OEM fob. To enter the vehicle, simply walk over and uh, do what you did before you had the remote starter installed. Press the button. Press the button. Press the button. Enter the vehicle. Close the door and drive away. Okay, before we wrap it up, I'm going to show you why you need to connect uh, the wire labeled auto lamp shutdown um, to the uh, door pin wire or put the um, pin back in the BCM for the auto lamp shutdown. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to activate it by the OEM remote. Okay, the vehicle's up and running. Now, if we let the vehicle time out, which means if we don't come out and drive the vehicle, or we shut it off by remote, the headlights are going to stay on. They're waiting for the door to be open and then closed to begin a um, auto lamp shutdown countdown. So, we've, we've shut the car off or aborted the remote start. Now, Correct operation would be for these lights to stay on for a little while and then shut off by themselves. So we're going to sit here and we're going to let the delay expire. And there we have it. The light shut off. Without this connection, the lights will stay on indefinitely until the doors are opened and closed. Without this connection, the lights will stay on until the driver's door is opened.